Hey, good morning. My name is Dr. Darren Oatley and with my colleague, uh, Mr. Tom Ainsco, we're going to talk you through some of the engineering aspects of the new reactor that we've built for the Bioalgae project. Uh, firstly, whenever we build a new reactor, it's good to understand the constraints uh, of the system that you're trying to use. So in this particular system, we had one main constraint was the new reactor was intended for flue gas renumeration. Uh, and as such, we needed to implement a closed reactor setup because of the potential for toxic gases. Some of the other constraints that were in this system was the suitable must, uh, system must be suitable for scale up to a full industrial process, which has several implications in that it must have multiple gassing and off-gassing facility. There's a minimum amount of solid settling available in the system. Uh, it must have adequate mixing for both nutrient mixing and delivery, but also for gas uh, mixing. Uh, low energy demands is advantageous and obviously the reactor should be as cheap as possible. And in that sense, where possible, we've all opted for off-the-shelf items from standard suppliers. Uh, Swansea itself has some specific constraints uh, of note and the paramount one of this is we've got an existing uh, greenhouse facility where we are already have some bioreactors and this new reactor must fit alongside these bioreactors within the greenhouse so this gave us a, a 3D spatial constraint. Uh, also the UK sunlight conditions are very different to many other parts uh, of the world so we had to optimize the tube size that we selected for UK sunlight conditions and to this aim we did a, a lot of modeling beforehand to show what the optimum tube size would be for the UK system. Uh, the orientation of the reactor in terms of the light phase of the reactor needed to be flexible such that we could have it either perpendicular or parallel to the sunlight. Uh, and the design then again should follow simple engineering uh, considerations such that it should be cost effective, should be low energy and also in this environment it's a pilot scale system so it needs to be uh, flexible to be configured differently depending on the actual trials that are underway. So, a number of constraints, which also gives us options to what do we select. So, in essence, out in industry, there are lots of large-scale systems. Uh, predominantly for major processing, people use these paddle-type arrangements in, in long uh, troughs, or we could have a tank-type arrangement, or the other thing that's very pos popular is a, a tubular-type reactor. For our system, we wanted a closed system, so the tubular type reactor is the most sensible. In this case, we've shown horizontal tubes, and our experience in the past with horizontal tubes is you can get settling of the algae species along the bottom of the tube. So ideally, we wanted to go for a vertical tube instead. So we had a chat around the network that was available, and the guys at the Hellenic Marine uh, Research Center uh, had built a vertical tube reactor, of which this is a schematic of it. So what we're looking at here is a dark tank, pump underneath, and then basically a series of tubes. These are five meters in height, where the reactor material just snakes through these tubes and then recycles back down into the dark tank. It's a very, very simple concept, and it works very effectively uh, in Greece. So we wanted to investigate this. So we went out, took a look at it, took some photographs. So you can see these are the light phase tubes in this instance. And also at the top here, you can see there's a vapor filled space or a gas space where you can do gas exchange. So the CO2 and the O2 that evolves from the reactor system can be implemented and taken away uh, respectively. This is a top of a sealed uh, system that doesn't have the gas tubes on the top. And here you can see the dark tank that they used. So it's in essence a very, very simple, cheap solution. So we liked it a lot. It will do the job for what we want. So we wanted something similar to this. So we started to design for Swansea. So a lot of the issues at Swansea were related to reconfiguration and they will be the same on industrial scale. So we wanted to go for a modular design. So we took a bank of 10 tubes. 10 was a nice round number, so that's what we started with. And we started to look at what we could actually build. So in, t in terms of Swansea, we were limited in height to two and a half meters, but we chose a tube size of 110 millimeters. Also note that we offset each of the tubes in our design such that the center of gravity was distributed rather than specifically fixed, which makes balancing a vertical tube much, much more straightforward. Uh, with a bank of 10, it's very easy and flexible for reorientation. It's also very easy to replicate and expand to larger systems. Uh, the idea was that we would take a distributed monitoring system, such that we could measure pH, CO2 concentration, nutrient concentration, temperature, etc., in each one of the 10 tube banks. 
Uh, and an offset profile will help in terms of a smaller footprint, so you can effectively cram more meter cubed of reactor into a smaller space. Uh, and also, as I said earlier, increased freestanding stability, which is uh, paramount. So in very basic terms, this is what the new reactor looks like as a schematic. So the idea is that we would take flue gas from any system, effectively a, a power station. In this particular case, uh, we've got a wood burner in the system. So we inject CO2 into the dark tank. The reasoning for injecting into the dark tank is not only will there be CO2 in this stream, there could also be some toxic gases in there, such as carbon monoxide. So the idea of injecting into the tank in this case was just to limit where carbon monoxide lives within our system. And also, not shown on the diagram, there's a small purge on this headspace such that any off-gassing uh, will be swept away. So we should not uh, accumulate carbon dioxide in any one place in our facility. Following uh, gassing of the algae system inside the dark tank, we drop out to the bottom of the dark tank through a pump and then through a light phase reactor or the light phase of this particular reactor. It snakes around and then recycles back to the dark tank. Uh, the only control in this system is basically we monitor the pH uh, at the exit of the dark tank and this controls how much uh, CO2 we inject into the system by, via the flue gas. That's the only control. What's not shown on the system is we've got a, a heat transfer coil inside the dark tank such that we can control the temperature of the reactor if we want to. And there's also multiple stations along the length of the light phase and in the dark phase where we record system parameters such as temperature, pressure, We've got dissolved oxygen sensors, CO2 sensors, uh, and the such like. So what does the system look like in practice? Uh, I'll start at this end. Basically, this is the back of our um, wood-burning stove. Here you can clearly see the chimney coming out of the stove. And I've highlighted this area here. This is where we have a T-piece where we offtake uh, the gases that are fed directly to the dark tank. There is a pump that supplies that. There's a gas pump. I can, you can see a picture of it here. It's a very small system. And that supplies the gases into this dark tank. Uh, the, the, the entry point to the dark tank uh, for the gas is down at the bottom here. And you can see that the tubes actually enter at the top and then travel down inside the dark tank. The dark tank itself has a level gauge, which you can see just here, which is just a simple uh, clear tube. And then you can see multiple outputs and inputs into the dark tank. These are for basically supplying the algae uh, and nutrients to the pump, which pumps it around the light phase and the return leg. The reason why there's two return legs is that we've got a kickback loop from the pump that allows us to prime the pump in the first instance. The pump itself here is a standard pump. It's an Argonaut uh, pump, similar to a pump that you would have in any typical swimming pool. So it's very cheap. Uh, and you can see on the, on the right hand side here, this is a, a picture of uh, one of the, the fences that we built as part of the light phase. Now originally we planned to have 10 tubes in this light phase reactor, but we actually found it was better to go with 18 purely because the dimensions work better and it's standard size for frameworks, etc. So you can see that each one of these tubes basically loops up and down along this fence until it hits a collection point here and then gets sent back into the dark tank. Also, just to show you some more images of the same reactor, this is the whole reactor with three fences sat next to each other. It uh, gives you some idea of the scale. This is around about uh, a 10 to 12 meter run, and the total volume inside the light phase is about 1,250 liters. We have the same amount inside the dark tank, which makes the total reactor volume of about 2,500 liters. You can see here a zoom in on one of the tube sections just so you can see. So you can see the vertical tube here and here and you can just see uh, the elbow at the bottom there that joins. It's good to note that the bottom of this elbow uh, is the only place in the actual light phase reactor that's horizontal. So it's the only place where settling could occur. But it's also the place where there's the maximum velocity turn in the system. So we're, we're pretty confident that you won't get solid settling in that run. Similarly, the other place where there's a horizontal tube, as you can possibly make out down this side of the reactor here, is the return line from the actual light phase down to the dark phase tank. You could, in principle, get solid settling in here, and for this reason we've put a T-piece which is just off-screen here, such that we can open the T-piece up and rod the system during cleaning cycles if necessary. Uh, we hope that that's not the case. Uh, here at the top you can see multiple frames being joined together by a series of valves. Um, very, very simple arrangements. So in principle, we could extend this system as large as we would like. Um, at the moment, we only do gassing and off-gassing inside the dark tank, but each of these tubes 
of which here is the top of the tube section. There's no reason why we couldn't do gassing and off-gassing at the top of each of these tubes. This makes this design extremely flexible and of the two or three times that we've run it thus far, we've had no issues at all with solid settling and it's been very, very simple and easy to clean. And thank you very much.